Hello everyone. Now today I'm going to take a look at the guitar a friend of mine has bought. Now, for those of you that follow my channel, you'll see that I've done quite a lot of videos on these guitars. Not this guitar in particular, this model, but the Inspired series. Now this is an Epiphone SG61 Maestro inspired by guitar. And look at that. How lovely does that look? I should point out you don't get the case when you buy this. This is brand new. It's still got the uh, plastic on the scratch plate. And a little bit there. So this is brand new. This is uh, from the shop. Now look at that. How stunning does this guitar look? Now what I really wanted to cover in this video was how good this guitar was in its own right and how it compares to a 60s Gibson SG. Now the only thing I'm not going to spend a lot of time on is the tremolo system. The guitar I've got in comparison is a 60s SG. It's a 2010 model. It's got the same slim taper neck, the same mahogany body and neck, The only thing it is missing is that tremolo. Now, as I said, I don't want to concentrate too much on it. These all have issues with tuning, all these tremolo systems, um, even on the Gibsons. They tell you, you know, you use them and it goes, puts the guitar straight out of tune. I think it's because it isn't actually a tremolo system. It's just a shaped piece of metal. But, we'll see. But... First impressions, fascinating. Look at it, it's absolutely stunning. Binding looks really good, but let's take it out of the case. Now, I just wanted to say before I continue with the video that taking this out of the guitar case, I was absolutely stunned. The guitar was in an awful state, a really bad state. Now, this is nothing to do with quality control at the factory. Because I've checked it thoroughly, this guitar. Uh, checked all the frets. Uh, you know, the tuners. Absolutely everything on it. And it's all fine. Uh, the quality control issue is not the problem here. What it is, the shop that this came from should be ashamed of itself for letting this go without even checking it. They've done absolutely no setup on it whatsoever. The action, as you can see here, was ridiculously high. And I mean ridiculously high. Anyone could have seen this. This is like it's been set up for slide guitar. Uh, the neck needed adjusting, the truss rod, which is no big deal. These, these often need adjusting anyway. And the setup isn't really unheard of from a shop. But to be in this sort of condition is terrible. The intonation was way out. It's not. It wasn't even just slightly in, you know, or slightly out like a lot of guitars are. It was really like way out, but it was absolutely disgusting. I think really, if my friend had noticed, he should have complained to the shop and got these to do this. This is absolutely terrible. But, you know, he's done me a big favour. He's done me a lot of favours, actually. And he's done me a big favour lending me this guitar so I could do this review. So I've given it a complete setup for him. But really, it's real bad because the price of this guitar, which I think he paid near on £500 for it, um, you would need a full setup, which I've given him. And this would cost you at least £60. But it's all done there anyway. But uh, on with the video. And here they both are, side by side. Two fantastic SGs. The Epiphone and the Gibson. Now with the Gibson, I can't do an exact comparison because I haven't got a Vibrola on my Gibson. But this is as near as damn it. Apart from obviously the scratch plate. It's got the same 60s tapered neck. The same as what the Epiphone's got. Different pickups, but we'll come to those. But let's get these guitars singled out and I can go through them in a bit more depth. But they look great together. Love that Kalamazoo headstock there. Very close to the Gibson headstock. But anyway, let's get these singled out and then we can get up to some specs on it. All the specs, obviously, you can look up online anyway. But let's do that. So here we are first, 
with the Epiphone. Now, I had to do a lot of work to this out of the box. This was brand new when it came to me. My uh, good friend Trevor lent this to me to do this video, just so I can let you all know. But this is a stunning guitar. It's built really well. Again, as with all the Inspired series, I love the Inspired series. And it really is built lovely. But quality control was absolutely terrible on this. So much work had to go into it, but I'm not going to dwell on that. You've heard about all that. And I just want to go over some specs of it. Now, the neck is 60 Slim Taper. Now, this neck, I'm not going to lie, feels strange to me. It feels like, it's not a bad neck, but it feels different to any neck that I've ever had. Now, the circumference of the neck, which is this bit here, see, it's, it says it's a C. Slim taper, well it doesn't say it's a C, I think it's C. It's just a bit flat, I can't explain it any better than that. It's just, there is nice and slim. If you like a thin neck, which I do, because I've got girl hands, it's just a bit flat, I think you could say. It feels strange, but you do get used to it. Now, from the first fret, the neck circumference, should I say, like the back part of the neck, is 63 millimeters at the first fret, and at the 12th fret, down here, Ooh, that's one of the 12th fret. It's 73 millimeters. The fretboard itself, at the fret or the nut, whatever you want to say, is 44 millimeters, and the 12th is 46 millimeters. Now it is slim taper. It is a slim neck, but like I say, a little bit flat. Got a GraphTech nut, as with all the Inspired series, trapezoid inlays. Lovely binding on them, which is fantastic. Frets over binding, as with all Epiphones. This body is gorgeous. Now, I've seen on a, a few of it saying the veneer is quite bad. I don't know how this is picking up. This is really well matched to the side of the guitar. I was a bit worried because I thought, well, they said there's a veneer on top and on the back. I'll show you the back in a moment. And they said it looks strange, but it doesn't on this guitar. Obviously, you can see that it is a veneer, but it looks lovely. I think it's been done really nice. I think you're never going to get that solid mahogany look. I shouldn't think this is a one-piece body, like a Gibson would be, or could be. You've got the Pro Bucker pickups. Two and three, as usual with the Inspired series. CTS pots, and that Maestro tremolo, with the same bridge as that are all on them, that are on them all, should I say. But without getting my huge body in the way, see if I can get that a bit better, just to be picking up. This is like a mirror. <laughs> But let's turn the guitar around so you can see the back. There you go, and there's the back. Like I say, let's get out of the way. It just, it's like a mirror, it really is. There's the veneer on the back, but it looks lovely. Really lovely. There's the neck, gorgeous neck. Right there. Epiphone Deluxe Tuners again. Lovely serial number 2021 model. This I've played a couple of 2020 models. I'm not sure whether they come out in 2019. I think they was released in 2019, but a couple of them got the 2020 date on there. And I've got to say, the neck felt really weird on those, but it could be down to the setup. I'm not exactly sure unless I play them side by side. But let's turn this guitar around again. Now, as I said. I'm not going to concentrate too much on the that Maestro Tremolo system, even though it's glorious. I don't want to concentrate too much on it, because the other guitar hasn't got it. But, I'll tell you one thing about this guitar, it's £8 and 2 ounces. That's a heavy guitar. It does feel a lot heavier than the Gibson. But this is so robust and beautifully built. Now let's get to the Gibson. And here we are with the Gibson. This is another beautiful guitar. Mahogany, body and neck, just like the Epiphone. 
trapezoid inlays just like the Epiphone. That's a bone nut that I've had put in it. Binding, same. Obviously binding over frets on a Gibson. Yeah, the pickups are a 498T and a 490R. CTS pots as usual. Top hat controls, exactly the same as the Epiphone. This obviously hasn't got a veneer. It's not a one piece body either, as you can see. But it is a lovely guitar. I'm going to do probably a separate video on the uh, pickups for this guitar compared against Pro Buckers. I did do a Pro Bucker versus Burst Buckers, but this one's, I'll do the same a bit later on. But it's a lovely guitar. Now, with this neck, 44 millimeters at the first, which is this part of the neck. This is more of a D shape, more of a little bit of a chunky neck. Still a 60 slim taper, but like I say, this is more rounded. So it feels more comfortable to me. Anyway, like I say, I've got girl hands. Feels more comfortable. The other one feels a bit flatter. Now, the circumference of that, it's 44 millimeters at the first fret and 55 at the 12th. The fretboard, 67 millimeters at the first, 77 at the 12th. So it's a bit bigger. Chunks out a bit down the bottom, but the rounded part, this part of the neck, is a bit rounder. Feels more solid in the hand, I'd say. Not a lot in it, but it does feel strange. The other one, like I say, just feels strange, the Epiphone. This is what I'm used to. Okay, and there's Epiphone necks I've got, obviously, on Les Pauls and the 335. They don't feel strange. They've got that roundness, but the SG, for some reason, is just a bit flatter. I don't know what that's all about. Yeah. Medium jumbo frets, exactly the same as the Gibson. Let's turn this guitar around so you can see the glory of the back of it. And there's the back. How lovely does that look? Like I say, you can clearly see it's not a one-piece body. Lovely neck. Gorgeous. Gibson Deluxe Tuners, which I've always said, apart from the colour, feel exactly the same as the Epiphone Deluxe. Exactly the same. But a glorious back. Lovely. But these are lovely guitars, both of them. But, let's put, turn this around again, one second. As I said, as with all the Gibsons and the Epiphone Inspired series, a lot of similarities. This is the closest I could get to the 60s. I mean, it is for all intent and purposes, exactly the same, neck-wise, function-wise, apart from that for Brola. I have not got, that, obviously, that tremolo system on here. But, like I say, I wanted to do a nearest damn it video just to see where it was lovely binding on this. Anyway, the only other difference is this is only six pound and five ounces, fifteen ounces. <laughs> six pound fifteen ounces, a lot lighter than the Epiphone. Now let's get on with the tests. Hello everyone. Now first up is the Epiphone. Now I'm not gonna spend too much time going through all this because I want to save it for the blind test. Uh, playing wise, it's fine. You do notice that the slightest movement will drift it. Okay, which you don't get with an SG normally, but that's down to the tremolo unit. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the tremolo unit because they've all got their problems, Gibson's as well. Uh, the tuning issues with them ain't too bad on this. You can use the tremolo and it doesn't knock it right out of tune. If you use heavy tremolo, obviously it does drift. But the neck, like I said, it's a bit flatter than the uh, Gibson, but it does feel comfortable. It's definitely slim taper, but like I say, it is definitely a bit flat and a bit strange feeling. Okay, it's a bit strange, like, like no neck I've really felt. It goes really flat up this end. I'm not sure whether that comes across. I've tried, but it looks, it don't really come across, but it feels like that. Now, this had loads of issues with setup. Nothing with quality control. After the complete setup, and it was a heavy setup I was doing it, it plays lovely, and it feels fantastic. You would definitely not be disappointed buying this guitar. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's the neck pick up, middle. problem at all. That annoys me but you would get used to it and it is a lovely feeling guitar and it looks the business. You can't knock the looks of this guitar. Absolutely fantastic. Now let's try the Gibson. Now let's go with the Gibson this time. Now the first thing you know is as soon as you strap on this Gibson is that it's uh, a lot lighter. I mean, I didn't really notice it before, but going from one to the other, this is a lot lighter. Not that it's, you know, the Epiphone's going to be too heavy to gig with, where you think, oh, breaking your back, but it is a lot lighter, this guitar. The other thing, unless you really give it some, it doesn't waver, like the uh, one with the uh, tremolo unit on. Anyway, so, I mean, the neck feels... Neck feels like it should. I don't know whether it's because I've had this one, and I mean, I've kept this through buying a lot of SGs and playing a lot of SGs through repairs, etc. And this has always been the best one. I always tend to keep the best back uh, when I'm buying and selling, and uh, obviously for myself. But this is always so. I don't know whether it's because I love this one so much that it's, uh, it could be swaying me. But this video really is all to do with how you think it sounds. So I'm not, like I said, going to play a lot. I'm going to leave that to the blind test, but it's also to see if I'd replace my SG, like I've replaced my Les Paul and I've replaced my 335, but neck-wise, I wouldn't replace it at the moment. The neck feels like it should. It's a slim taper and it feels just like a Gibson should feel. Now, that's not to say the Epiphone neck's horrible. It's just a bit flat and a bit weird feeling to me. Now, the Epiphone inspired series on the Les Paul and the 335 changed my mind to keep them and to get rid of my Gibsons, but this is different. The neck is strange. I mean, the necks on the other two were very similar. Not the same as a Gibson, but extremely similar. Very similar. But this feels completely different to the Epiphone, and it keeps throwing me. But, um... There's the bridge pickup. The middle pickup. And the neck, uh, the bridge, definitely sounds to me, just in the room here, a bit weaker than the Epiphone. The middle, again, not as real powerful. The neck, yeah, again, the pickups on the Epiphone. It sounded better to me in the room. But like I say. I'm not going to do a lot of playing. That's now a beautiful guitar. Okay. It feels a lot lighter. The neck feels better. The tuners are exactly the same. As far as I'm concerned. It doesn't sound as uh, gritty and as powerful. As the uh, Epiphone. Which is a shock. There you go. Everything else feels pretty much the same. So let's get on with the blind test.
So, have they done it again? Well, in all honesty, this was a difficult one for me. Let me start by making it clear that this is a fantastic guitar and the build quality, just like all the Inspired by range that I've played, and I've played quite a few, is absolutely superb. I know I had issues with this guitar, but as I pointed out, these were solely down to the shop where this was purchased, and I'm sure had my friend had more time before handing it to me, he would have noticed these, taken it back, and I'm sure the shop would have sorted out all his problems free of charge. Just like the whole series of these, they have been built to almost perfection. From the deluxe tuners and graph tech nut, perfect fret job, binding and headstock carve, through to the Pro Bucker pickups, CTS pots, and even the cushion pieces of material between the strap buttons. This leaves you with a feeling that these guitars are real high end, and as I've pointed out already, these new inspired by Gibson Epiphone range have driven me to sell my Gibson 335 and Gibson Les Paul guitars and replace them both with their Epiphone inspired equivalents, and not just on the build quality, but the feel and sound too. This SG, however, sadly falls short for me. Not for the build quality or even the sound, but just for the strange neck that they chose to use for the SG60s models, both the Vibrola and the standard. Setting aside the issues with the tremolo, which is really quite annoying, you may have been able to hear that as you play this guitar, especially if you're using distortion and it's a fast tempo song, you can hear the notes and tones drifting, which is so off-putting. As far as it goes with using the tremolo, it's not too bad if used gently, but again, any vigorous movements puts you out of tune immediately, so you couldn't even really finish the song, which really isn't ideal. The Gibsons have similar issues, but their tremolos are more sturdy, so these faults are not as noticeable. They especially don't drift just from playing without using the tremolo. Well, why not just buy the Inspired by Standard model, without the tremolo, I hear you ask. Well, it's that neck car for me. It really feels weird. I've searched online for other reviews, and no one seems to have a problem with it, apart from Trogli's guitar. He was the only other person I could find that mentioned it, so maybe this is really personal taste. So if you're thinking of purchasing this one, then don't be put off by that reason alone, even though I would urge you to try before you buy it where that's possible. Now I don't want to turn this into a totally negative review, as there are lots of pros with this guitar, and they are the look and feel. I feel it's a stunning looking guitar, both in the hands, or on the wall, or even in the case. It has that real iconic Gibson look, and let's be honest, feel. For around £450, you get a real sweet guitar that is far better than any Epiphone I have ever played, and I mean that. I think these Inspired By models are the best Epiphones I have ever played, including the Korean models. These are easily on par with the much sought after and coveted Japanese Epiphones, and less than half the price. The pickups, in my opinion, are better than the 498T and the 490R that are in the Gibson SG, so if the neck doesn't bother you, then I'd say choose this guitar over the Gibson, and at a third of the price, you really can't go wrong. If the tremolo isn't your cup of tea, then just buy the basic standard series. It would be perfect. If, however, you're needing that tremolo, then I'd say beware. And if you can afford it, buy the Gibson Vibrola. It's sturdier, made of thicker metal, so much more stable. So in conclusion, this won't be replacing my Gibson SG, but that's not to take anything away from it. I feel the neck is more personal taste than a problem, but I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on the pickups and what you thought the better sounding were, and if you managed to guess the Gibson ones correctly. And also, if you already had Epiphone inspired SG, let me know what you think of that neck in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching, and if this video helped you in any way, please like and subscribe, as that really helps me out and it helps me to continue to make content for you and this channel. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.